we're gonna smoke fish or we're gonna burn it to the ground. My next popular series is gonna be swearing with Kevin in the forest. How's it going in there, Kevin? It's uh, it's not bad. Like you just trial it out with the pool trial and you don't get any on you. It actually works pretty good. I am going to build a smokehouse or a smoker or some sort of box that emits a lot of smoke. The idea is to build a gabion basket. I don't know if you know what gabion baskets are. I can explain. A gabion basket is basically a wire mesh basket that they pile rocks into. And the rocks are held in the shape of the wire basket. So if we stand here long enough, you think that the hole is gonna dig itself gone? Uh, I think so because I see uh, road crews do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just stand around a hole? Yeah. I think you gotta start a hole and then stand around it and then it just gets bigger over time. If you guys don't know, this is Don. I invite Don over every time I need to dig a hole. <laughs> so we're gonna start the pizza oven, but we gotta excavate the ground. We gotta get rid of the topsoil in order to have a nice base uh, so it doesn't tip over or sink into the ground. Smokehouse. What did I say? Pizza oven. I said pizza oven? <laughs> <laughs> smokehouse. We gotta build a smokehouse. Jeez. I'm gonna clear some stuff up. Don's gonna start digging a hole. He's got the general idea. I drew him a picture. It looks like a square box. Let's get digging. They use these for retaining walls. Like you probably see them on like at the side of bridge abutments and stuff like that. And it's a really convenient way to stack stone and keep it into a specific pattern. Once I've done that, is to take the inside of the gabion basket, which is gonna be my structure on my walls, and I'm going to parge the inside of the fireplace with clay. Now the clay is going to act kind of like my refractory cement. Geez, we're getting technical now. So the refractory cement's going to keep the firebox intact in order for us to direct our smoke up into the smokehouse to smoke our meat. Just to be clear, we're making a smokehouse, not a pizza oven. Smokehouse. Stick with the plan, Kevin. Those are the rocks that are gonna be the foundation of the smoker. There's our stockpile, our stockpile of material, some old two by four, some wood. What do you think of smoker bean? Oh, she gets, gets so close. Here, they wanna see you, they wanna say hello. You wanna tour my hole in the forest? He this is our hole we've dug. You can see where we've got topsoil. How deep is the topsoil, Don? Topsoil is approximately a foot. Wow, a foot of topsoil. Maybe, maybe a little less. Yeah, we had to level it out. So here's the here's the hole. So we're down to down to clay clay base. This gives us a nice a nice platform. Don't you love when a plan changes halfway through? Well, we're not even halfway through. We just started. And then I thought to myself. Let's do a base out of brick. I've got these bricks just laying around the property everywhere. So why not use them? This is a clay brick. It's got no holes in it. It's uh, it's weathered the uh, the winter a couple of times. I'm going to do the base of this smokehouse with brick. Let's lay those bricks. Hey, Don, what's this fence called? Wire fence. Wire fence. <laughs> it's called wire fence. I bet you there's a technical name for this fence. Wire fence. We're gonna find out. Remember the lady foot and the whole alignment punch and the drift? The wire fence. I don't know what it's called. It's it's a wire fence of some kind that we were going to make a gabion basket out of somehow because I want to try this. Don feels like he got the short end of the stick on the whole alignment punch so we're gonna give him the benefit of the of the doubt on uh we're gonna call it many many different things. Okay, so we're gonna make a gabion basket out of this material here. This is the basket where we're basically, it's like basket weaving 101 with, with sharp pokey stuff that makes you bleed. Fortunately, we are not bleeding yet. Fashioning the, the wire into rectangles and then we're bending them over to connect them all. And that'll be our cribbing basically for the rock foundation wall. Time consuming, tedious work. But can you really beat time in the forest doing stuff like this? I can't. I can just... Where would you rather be, Don? I can't think of another place <laughs> I'd rather be. <laughs> in hindsight, we should have probably taken the wire and made it a little long and then bent it so it was still intact when we, uh, when we like, because we could have kept the bottoms, right? Because we could have basically made, taken like wrapping paper, like you're wrapping a present at Christmas and then and then take it and like fold it so you wouldn't have to join all 
six sides of this cube. We can see that the foundation of the smokehouse is coming together. It's kind of hard to tell because it just looks like it's like wireframe rendering sort of thing. If you've ever done anything on a computer, it's like a three-dimensional wire render of a foundation on a smokehouse. So this is uh, this is my this is going to be my structure. So I'm going to fill this thing with rocks. This stuff is tie wire. This stuff is used in commercial construction quite heavily in tying up furring channel and other steel members to make bulkheads and ceilings. I happen to have a whole lot of it. It's very versatile for tying. It comes in these convenient little lengths. So fun fact, Don has been working with me for uh, going on five, five and a half years or so. Uh, and four and, a half, four and a half years. And we always start projects and there's no real direction. It's always up in here. And Don's always kind of speculating on what we're going to do. I have it up here. It's very clear. And Don, we play a game together on let's see if we can make what's up in here a reality. My next popular series is going to be Swearing with Kevin in the Forest. We've already talked about that. This is it the Hobbit? The Hobbit house build. The Hobbit house build was Swearing in the, in the Forest with Kevin. This is right up there with it. We're coming right along on this build, but uh, I haven't showed Don the ducks yet. So I'm going to take this opportunity. We're going to go down. We're going to feed some ducks. This duck build house, we, uh, when I first got them, I actually had to put a, a duck house in. Why is the sun so bright? There. Oh, they're excited. Oh, wow. They're big they're ducks. Big, too, eh? big ducks, eh? Look at ways, ways. We let them out and now they're just, uh, they're free. They're free range ducks now. What they're going to eat? They're going to eat Don's fingers. Oh, he's not chicken. Ah, chicken. <laughs> They're hungry ducks. You know what? They'll just eat. They'll just keep eating. What, who's more scared? Is it Frankie or the ducks? Frankie, you scared of the ducks? Or is the ducks scared of you a little bit? Here, ducky, 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 ducky. Here, ducky, 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 ducky. Good morning, guys. This is the start of day two of the firebox smoker house build. Smoker? Firehouse? Not, hopefully it's not a firehouse. It's a smokehouse. A smokehouse, smoker, whatever have you. And here's where the action's gonna be. So what we are trying to figure out right now is the roof of the firebox and what we're going to do with the chimney. So ideally you have charcoal here, a nice cool fire. You add your, your seasoned wood, your cherry or your apple wood here. And then the smoke comes up out there into your smokehouse over here. So this chimney goes like this, connects them all together. You can see that we've, our gabion baskets are almost done. We've got some structural stability. So that it doesn't splay out. Oh yeah, and the other thing we want to do is raise the floor of the firebox up to the ground level. Like a glove, look at that. So there's our top of our firebox and that's gonna offer us a little bit of a smoke shield, smoke deflector off the front of it. It'll support stone. We just gotta install the chimney now. Black would be last summer, that's good. Hold the camera. Lesson for the day. Don't have to move rocks. So we're collecting the rocks. Fill our gabion baskets. There's our firebox. You can see our chimney. Gabion basket. We got a couple of rocks in there already. We got a toad in there. Toad will get out. Okay, so now that we're halfway full of rocks, what I'm gonna do is add some more tie wires to prevent the sides from bowing out. So I'm gonna add them every once in a while, wire them in, and that'll prevent the sides from blowing out because we all know what happens when there's not enough support in a basket for anything. It blows apart. I don't wanna have to do another video showing that my smoke house blew up.
first attempt at cooking lunch in the pizza oven besides the pizza that we made on the test. So we made grilled cheese as Don and I. What do you got there, buddy? <laughs> grilled cheese, it's very good. And a little bit of dirt. A little dirt. A little, little ash. I made a, made a grilled cheese with pastrami and Havarti. Mmm, it's delicious. So yeah, we're just gonna break for lunch, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna get dirty. We're still gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start making the uh, clay, the clay walls on that pizza or the smoker. The smoker. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's like a smoked bread sandwich. Mmm. Smoked bread sandwich. So now that we have the basic structure of the smokehouse built. Now it involves smoke sealing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go pick up some clay from when we excavated the pond. So there's a lot of that really rich clay material that uh, is sitting on the surface now. So I'm going to pick that up, mix it into somewhat of a paste, use it as parging, and I'm going to parge the inside of the firebox as well as inside of where the smoke is coming out of the firebox and make an airtight seal so there's smoke goes to where we want it to, and not to where we don't want it to. All right, let's go find some clay. We are looking for stuff like this. This is a chunk of clay and it's hard as a rock, but you add water to it and it turns into Play-Doh. So we're picking those up. We got some pretty big blobs already. And then we're gonna make that into parging. See, there's a nice piece of, that's a nice piece of clay right there. There's some clay. See the clay? Incoming. Oh, that's a big one. We're making mud pies, so I don't know how this is gonna react. So this is the clay here. We had to add some water, make basically making mud. A little heavier consistency of mud. So I think think thick thick peanut butter. You know, we need, we need an industrial potato masher. This is what we're looking for. This is pure clay. It doesn't have any smell, which is unusual. Usually it stinks like, well, it usually stinks. This stuff does, doesn't stink at all or my nose is broken. Who knows? But this is, this is gonna be our wall or inside. So, I don't know if we can, come on down. Can we see this? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this and we're gonna slap it to the inside of the cage. And you just mash it in there. And that's gonna give us our our wall. Actually, that looks pretty good. We're gonna create a base. And the reason why we're gonna do that right now is because we still got mud left. So what I'm gonna do is make a picture frame in order to start our wood structure. So basically measure corner to corner. We got, I'm gonna do a little bit of an overhang. We say 35, 35 by, 35 by 57. That's my picture frame. This is a good picture frame. It's perfect. Is it perfect? All right, so this is our foundation. So we're gonna put that right there. Look at that. What do you think of that, Don? Looks great. Starting to look like something. Yeah, it went from absolutely nothing to look like something. We're going to add mud on top of the rock basket. We're going to stick it back down and that gives us a nice stable base to build our smokehouse.
How's it going in there, Kevin? It's uh, it's not bad. Like you just trial it out with the pool trial, and you don't get any on you. It actually works out pretty good. That's good. Yeah, it looks good. Do do I have something on me? Uh, a couple little spots, oh. but nothing major. All right. Okay. That's good. We'll just uh, I'll just keep trialing it. Out. Okay. Yeah. So I think we did pretty good. I've uh, I'm working on my filming. I know there's a lot of guys on, uh, on in the comments. Well, a couple of guys in the comments are be like, "Look at the lens," and I'm trying to look at the lens. And in reality, is is when you look at the side of the camera, you can frame your shot pretty good, and then you can see if you got stuff on your face. But I've, I'm over that. I've I've graduated to the point where I can talk directly into the camera, you guys, and I don't even have to look at the viewfinder anymore. I just assume everything's well. I don't need check my face my face is good one wildcrafter that's that's the name so jeremy from one wildcrafter is uh is gone fishing with chris and they've gone on an epic fishing adventure and they're coming back to stay at the cabin and i want to get this thing done so they can smoke their fish today it's the business end of building that smokehouse let's get started so the question of the day is how big tall do we make this smokehouse so i imagine it's about the size of a refrigerator so how tall is a refrigerator? Do you think we should go up about five feet? Five feet looks like a comfortable height. So now that you can see a basic structure of the smokehouse firebox, this is going to be the peak right here. So that has to make a peak like this. This is the high spot. So you want the smoke to come up out of here and out through the ridge of this little box here. This is going to be wood storage. So basically it's gonna go like that and like that. Now just to figure that angle out, I'm sure there's math. I'm gonna use a level as a straight edge and go from the peak and that'll give me what I need to cut off that top piece. The center point of the two by four. So there's the uh, the peak of my roof. I was going to cut it up there, but then I checked. And you can see that there's a couple of nails in the end of it. So if you ever try to use an old wood, the old nails are going to be at the end. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pull those out and uh, cut my angle. That would have wrecked my saw blade pretty good. Okay, so while I was at it, I made two. So one for the one side, one for the other. Uh, and then I'm going to put some screws in it so I can just go up there and screw them in. Call this stud Don, my helper for today. Impossible to hold that by myself, so I added this little guy as a holder. So that's our that's our slope. Just gotta cut that top part off. Can you see that? Now I'm going to frame out the door opening, thinking beyond, past my nose, there's going to be lap siding on here. So what I want to do is actually keep the door jam further out than the actual framing in order for the to hide the edges of the lap siding. Take it past the nose. I'm going to talk a little bit about hammers. And the reason I'm going to talk about hammers is because I was made fun of for having a little hammer. And I, I don't think it has anything to do with the size of the hammer. It's how you use it. Now, this is actually larger than the first hammer I started with. But if you're first starting out, ideally, I think you should start with a smaller hammer. It's easier to control. It's lighter. You can swing it better. It's, it's just easier to use. Now, a lot of guys, when they're like, well, we're going to start off in framing, and they get this massive 22-ounce hammer. This thing, I think, is like a 16-ounce hammer. It's about the right size. I, I, it's not too long. It, it's got the right size head. Now, is this a framing hammer? I don't think so. It's probably more of a general carpentry hammer. Uh, it's, it's not like a trim hammer. It's, it's just, it's an all-around good hammer. I like this hammer. It's all steel. It's got no wood in it. It's, uh, it's an S-wing. The other hammer that I started with was, it had a really big hook in it. And it was really great for pulling nails. This one, 
it's still good for pulling nails. It's not as great for pulling nails. If you're just starting out into carpentry, into building stuff, start with a smaller hammer. And if you're finding that you can't get that one to work, why would you go any bigger? Practice with a smaller hammer first and then work your way up to a larger hammer if you feel like you can't get the nails in quick enough. If you can't hit them with a big hammer, you're not gonna get them in quicker anyway. So start with a smaller hammer, you'll get the nails in way easier because you'll be able to control it. And guys, don't make fun of people for having small hammers. Okay, so this little area here is the wood storage area. So I got my storage for my hardwood. It's going to be like apple wood or cherry wood or hickory all those fancy fruit woods. This is the storage area here. So I need to make a platform for the wood to sit. And then I'm gonna add vents because there's gonna be heat underneath here. And ideally it doesn't catch all my wood on fire. Now the fire that's gonna be under here isn't supposed to be crazy hot. It's not supposed to be flaming. It's supposed to be smoking. I think it's not gonna light itself on fire. If it does, I will film it. Now that the majority of the structure is complete on the, on the smokehouse, I need some siding for it. So the other day I had some time and I milled it. What I did was I actually milled up a spruce log and I'm gonna use the spruce for the walls and I milled up a cedar log for the, uh, the roof. Now, a lot of the times when you have really short logs, it's difficult to mill, but I was able to make a jig. I'll show you the jig and I'll show you how I milled basically useless material into something that is going to fit our purpose well. So we're gonna to go to that clip now, and then we'll come back here and put it all on. We're gonna mill up some siding for the smokehouse. Now traditionally, a mill this size does not like to take logs this short. So what I've done is I've actually made a jig. If you don't know what a jig is, woodworkers love jigs. They make jigs for everything. This is a wood jig for short log. So what I've done is I've made a cradle out of some two by fours. I've added some end blocks on here to hold my log in place. Otherwise the log would just shoot off this thing. So the idea is to place it in the cradle, lock it down, and then I'll, I'll be able to mill my siding. I went the cheap way, I used two by fours. It's an adequate solution for the problem that I'm having. Ideally you have longer logs. This is a, this is a cast off log from uh, an arborist job in the city. So I'm gonna take somebody's trash and turn it into siding. This is great looking stuff. I'm standing in where all the smoke comes up. The smoke comes up through here, smokes all our meats, cheeses, whatever have you. So yeah, I'm gonna line the inside of this one and then the outside of everything else. Well, we're getting somewhere. So this is the firewood storage. It's a fair size. So I'm gonna continue on laying my lap siding by installing it like that and then just cutting it to the opening. It's one of those time consuming, tedious jobs to try to get it done. Although it is easier to put this on and then put the roof on because you have a template where the roof line is, then you can just cut along the roof line. If you had the roof on, you'd have to measure, shape it up to be something. I just got a call from my brother, Chris. He's the, uh, the wooded beardsman. Him and Jeremy have been out uh, fishing all day over in uh, Lake Ontario. On Lake Ontario, they've been fishing for salmon. So they gave me, they gave word that they're coming back with some salmon and they're wondering if they can smoke it. And I said, well, it's not quite ready yet. So I'm out a little later than I normally am and I'm gonna see how far I can get, maybe cobble it together so it actually functions so they can actually smoke a fish and then maybe button up the loose ends later on. That's the cedar that I milled. This is beautiful stuff. So I'm gonna lay it like one big shingle from side to side all the way up the roof, leave a gap at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is snap a chalk line from side to side and actually straighten out my edges. This should go pretty quick. So Jeremy and Chris just showed up. Chris is given a tour of the uh, property. Jeremy hasn't been here in a while. He's the guy from One Wild Crafter. He ate uh, wild foods for an entire year. That's insane. I don't think I could eat wild foods for a day. I'm gonna continue making this door 
and um, I don't think they're gonna be smoking fish tonight, but first thing tomorrow morning, fish smoking. I just gotta build this door. So there's our basic layout for our door. Now we just have to skirt the back of it. And I'm gonna use some of the old spruce stuff that we use for the siding as the backer board. Door. Well guys, it's getting a little too dark for this. I am going to call it a night tomorrow morning. Join me, we're gonna get this thing rocking. Okay guys, well, we're back. Well rested and ready to hang the door. We're gonna smoke fish or we're gonna burn it to the ground. Doesn't even need a handle, it's a perfect fit. Ah, probably needs a handle. My safety glasses. So what I'm gonna do is just trim off the top ridge line of the uh, smokehouse and then I'm going to build what's going to look like a little birdhouse on top and that's going to direct the smoke up and out so I, we want flow we want flow to come in the bottom and then up out the top so I'm just going to straighten out the ridge cap and build a little birdhouse I'm going to put one rack in for now give this thing a run for its buddy and see if it works because you don't want to get too far before you realize it doesn't work Look at that, it fits like a glove. If this works, I'm gonna add a rack probably about every six inches to maximize the efficiency so I don't wanna waste any smoke. So the moment you've all been waiting for, we're gonna see if this thing works. So we're gonna light the fire and see if smoke comes out the top. Not every day is the fire already made for you. I'm just gonna light it up. Well, this guy just kind of slides in place because you don't want the fire out of control. So that'll direct our smoke, heat, whatever that way. And then we got our we got our smoky house in like we got it filled with smoke. It's uh it's working. So keep our smoke in. Like that's successful. Watch. Ready? Are you ready? We need smokier wood. The wood we used was a little too dry, so I'm gonna go try to find some relatively wet wood because we want it to smoke more than just burn. We're not looking for heat. I know there's a there's a uh, cherry tree up here that a branch fell off. I'm gonna cut up. This cherry wood is actually a branch that fell off a boat a month ago. So the leaves are still kind of on it. So this is wet wood. This stuff smokes more than it burns. The water actually comes out. You can see that there's no checking at the end of it. You know, it's still pretty wet. Normally wood's about probably 50% moisture. What you want, you want, the, you want the water to prevent it from burning too much. This is ideally what you don't want is uh, is flames coming out your chimney pipe. You just want smoke coming out of there. So what's happened is we've got too good a combustion. <coughs> it's got got some smoke in there. Too good a combustion. So we need to add incomplete combustion. So wetter wood, more of a smoldering fire. One of those fires you don't really want. You know those fires that you sit beside. You get too much smoke in your face. We want one of those. We can hear the sizzle now. That's what we want. So if you don't have fresh wood, you can always take your chips and, and, and soak them in water in order to increase your, uh, your moisture content. But another way to do it is actually reduce the oxygen. So oxygen needs, fire needs oxygen to burn. We remove the oxygen, we're gonna create more smoke. So I'm gonna just load this thing up and I'm actually going to remove a lot of the oxygen. So let's just do that. We have found a solution. The solution is to build the worst fire ever. You don't want it to burn, you want it to smoke. So let's have a look inside to see what, if it works. Look at that. Holy, it's got some smoke in there. You just gotta build the world's worst fire. Look at that, whoa. I think that is good. <laughs> Chris for the Wooded Beardsman, you guys may know him. He has a channel, such films small out. channel. Such, such <laughs> films as what, eating a beaver in the forest? Or co-eating a beaver with Jeremy. Co-eating yeah. a beaver, so this, this yeah, guy over here is Jeremy from One Wild Crafter. He's uh, 
he's come up for the uh the, the inaugural fish smoke yeah so uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna smoke fish and i'm gonna build a little birdhouse for the uh, it's gonna be like a cupola it's a cupola cupola a cupola a cupola <laughs> a cupola or a cupola we just threw the salmon in let's uh have a quick look we don't want to let too much smoke out Ooh. see the salmon in there oh she's just smoking good little birdhouse looking thing is the cupola or the copla. It's the little birdhouse, the little cap. It's basically a chimney cap that's going to prevent the water from going directly down into the hole so it won't get wet. Look at that temperature gauge. We're at uh, just under, I think we peaked around 150. It's, I just had the door open so it's, it's about 140 right now. So it looks like it's, uh, looks like it's good to go. Let's, let's pull this guy up. Check a look at that. That's like the most beautiful salmon ever. Look at that smoked fish. Look at that, it's beautiful. Let's let's take a bite. Hang on. Let's see, I got the little piece here. Oh yeah. Look at that flaky. Oh, that's flaky. Oh, that's, that, that's, that's delicious, that bone. That's just delicious. Mm-mm, good. Well, I'd say that's a success. That's uh, smoking a fish in the woods on your own smoker. I can't get out of the smoke.